Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to do another installment of Wizard Tips. We haven't done any of those in a while, but this time around there's so many tips that we're going to cut this up into two separate halves. We're going to do the first half on this video, and then there will be a second half finishing it up on the very next video. So let's go ahead and get started. So you go to start your car, it's running a little rough, and the check engine light is on. How do we find out what's wrong? Let's get our handy dandy Autel tool hooked up and see what's going on. So this is my handy dandy MS908S that Autel hooked me up with. They also gave me the maxi scope and the whole complete setup here. This thing gets used a lot in the shop. In fact, I wouldn't run my shop at all with the types of cars that come through here without Autel. One really cool thing about this, it's wireless. I can go hook this into the car. I don't even have to be in the car. I can come over here and see what's going on. Let me go hook it up for you guys. So I've got it plugged into the OBD2 port. Let's go ahead and get this thing started here. Okay, so we go to Asia. Toyota. Read the VIN. And it has read the VIN. Okay, 2005 Toyota RAV4 North America, yes. Go to Diagnosis, Control Unit, Engine ECT, okay. And we're going to find our code and see what is going on here. So you feel the engine shaking, the check engine lights on, you're wondering what in the world is going on here. So let's find out. Go to the trouble codes. And it shows three codes. It's actually all the same code. It's just pending current history. And it says cylinder one misfire detected. So you're sitting in your car and you're like, okay, I see that that's why my engine's shaking. There's a cylinder one misfire. I'm not a master mechanic. And what do I do now? What now? How, what, why is it misfiring? I'll show you some quick tips. Let's take a look. So on this engine, there are four ignition coils. One, two, three, and four. Our code that we just read says cylinder one misfire, so we're not going to look at number two or three. We're going to look at number one. So the trick here is to remove the coil, which I already have loose. We're going to check the integrity of the coil by doing a spark test. I'm going to show you the instructions and what to do here, and you need to follow them well so you don't get shocked. A couple of the tools I'm going to use are actually on my Amazon Affiliates page plastic pliers, and silicone test leads. They're all on there. We're going to hook one end to ground. And we're going to hold the other end with the plastic pliers because we don't want to get shocked. This thing, when I go to start it, it's going to be spouting out sparks everywhere. So while it's doing that, you don't want to have your hand next to it and get shocked. We're going to put this next to it, and we're going to examine the spark. Let me go ahead and go start it. Here we go. You can see it's a nice blue spark in there. So as I mentioned, we don't put our hands there. We put the tip of this test lead with our plastic pliers. We put the tip into the coil boot, not our fingers. What we're looking for there is that it, the spark can jump a good distance, about a half an inch, and that it's bright blue. If you see that the spark is orange, kind of like the color of the sun almost, an orangish color, or if you have to put that thing really close to the metal contact inside the boot to get it to even try to spark, you just isolated your problem. The coil is weak and has barely enough power to even fire off the spark plug. You could replace the coil, but there's one thing I do in the shop. There's a reason probably why the coil went bad. Let's take the plug out real quick and I'll show you. So here's the spark plug and as you can see the gap is pretty big on there. It should be around 40 to 50 thousandths and it looks like almost a hundred. 
whenever it gets to be worn out so bad that it has to jump such a large gap, that's hard on the coils and it will wear the coils out. In this situation, I would tell the customer you're getting four new plugs and a new coil and if they don't want to do that, I won't even do the job because the other plugs are also going to look like this and they're also going to be hard on the other coils and we don't want to damage the three good coils. So you get four new plugs, one new coil. Spark plugs are cheap, eight, ten bucks a piece. It doesn't make sense to try and just only do one. So go ahead and do them all. So in this situation here, we've, we can isolate, is it a plug, is it a coil? It could be ECM, it could be a lot of complicated problems, but that's not what we're getting into today. It's quick wizard tips to help possibly find the problem and fix it yourself without spending a whole bunch of money. I'll put this back in real quick. Much, much better. Put a new plug, new coil in. We really would have done four plugs, but I'm just showing you. Totally smooth now, fix the problem. We were able to find out where we needed to go, what we needed to do with those simple quick tips. So that's wizard tip number one. Let's move on to number two. So here we are in my 87 Grand Marquis, which I actually named Grandma, which is actually for sale, $3,000. Contact Crazy D in the office. This is a wonderful car. There's nothing wrong with it. It just sits. I drive it once a month and I feel really bad about that. I figure I can go to someone who can drive it every day and really enjoy this car. It's a good, good car. So right now we're going to show you a wizard tip on fuel injectors. You have a, maybe a slightly rough idle or something and you talk to your buddies, well, it might be a fuel injector. And you start thinking, well, how do I even know that it's a fuel injector problem? What is there I can check? I'm going to show you. We're going to start this engine up and show you wizard tip number two. Before I start it, I'll show you what we're going to be using. It is a mechanic stethoscope. This is also on my Amazon affiliates link. You can pur purchase one of these through there. So let's go ahead and get the engine started. Okay, we're going to place the tip of this rod on the injector body itself. I'll show you where. Just like that. I can hear it clicking. So basically, you would set the rod right on the body of the injector, and you would list it for going tick, 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 tick. You can actually hear it in there, like almost like a heartbeat, like click, 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 click. We tried to do that and see if we could play the sound through the microphone. It didn't work very well. But you're listening for a mechanical clicking noise. If you place it there and you don't hear anything, that injector may not be firing. So you definitely want to try and test those out. If you have an idea of which cylinder it is, you can focus on that injector. Or if it possibly could be one or two or numerous ones, you'll have to check all of them. But you just place it on the body and listen. You should hear click, 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 click. You can hear it pretty loudly, actually. Apparently this thing didn't, but... There's another test that you can do as well without pulling the injectors out and flow testing them on a flow bench at a rebuilder or something. They, they have a whole lot of other tools. I know you guys aren't going to have that at home. So the next test is electrically testing. There's two ways an injector can fail. It's mechanically, where it's not clicking, where it's spraying wrong, where it's not holding fuel pressure. And the second way they can fail is electrically, where it sends power to the injector to fire and nothing happens because it's dead. So let's go ahead and pull the connector off and let's electrically test the injector. So go ahead and pull that off. And you'll see there's two little pins in there. There's these little test leads. I, I sell an entire kit of them on my affiliates page. But you'll slide these tips over the pins. Just like so. Now we'll get our digital multimeter. Set it to ohms. Before you do any testing with any multimeter, always double check. Okay. 
like point something one, but it is it is working. Okay, what you typically want to see on these injectors is 12 to 14, sometimes 16 ohms. You really need to look at the manufacturing specs on that injector, but most of them I've ever checked it are supposed to be 12, 13, 14 in that range. Let's see what this one's at. This one's 16, and I know from experience that that's where it's supposed to be on these, is 16 ohms. This one's a 16.8 range, so that's good. That's a good injector. This is something you can do at each and every injector. And if you do that test and you know it's supposed to be 12 or 14 or 16 ohms, and you get three, there's an internal short inside the injector, something's wrong. Or if you get nothing, it, it doesn't register anything. It very well could be a dead injector, like the electrical part is just severed or dead inside of it. So that's another way you can check injectors. Electrically and mechanically, you can listen to them and electrically test them without pulling a whole bunch of stuff apart. And that's what we're doing today is quick wizard tips. On to tip number three. So you've been having a ground issue with your vehicle. You've had it checked out by a shop or you have a buddy who's a mechanic and thinks maybe I've heard on these cars that there's a ground issue on these cars and you want to test, is that truly the problem with my car? There's grounds all over the body that connect to the engine, and I'll show you one here in a minute. But just because the bolt is tight and everything looks good on the ground tab, doesn't mean there's actually a good connection there. It could be rusted or corroded, and the ECM or whatever's using that ground is not getting a good connection. It's caused all kind of haywire, crazy problems. So you get a check engine light for codes that are phantom codes that aren't even really there. You get issues where lights are working sometimes, and other times the lights aren't working. And you're like, what is going on here? We're going to do more than just take an ohm meter to the ground. We're going to load test the ground. We're going to f force the ground to work really, really hard. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll show you the tools I'm going to use. This is something I made for load testing grounds, or powers too, but we're doing grounds today. It's just a light socket out of a Dodge Intrepid or something, and I soldered in wires. The bulb is going to make the ground work really hard. That's what we're doing here is load testing it. That looks a little Frankenstein-ish. Yeah, you can't buy this on my Amazon affiliates page. But I don't even know that you can buy something like this. This is homemade, but you can make one very easy at home. Got a couple of test leads. And that's about it. So we go to test this. This is a ground connection here. Like I mentioned, these are all over the place on cars, modern cars today. So we go to test the ground. We'll use the ground off the engine block. So you go to test it, and it's like 0.2 ohm, 2.2 ohms. It's kind of a rusty connection anyway. But you say that the ground should be good. One ohms, zero ohms, whatever it is. So, well, the ground should be decent at least, and it may not be. So let's hook into the actual ground tab itself. So we got it hooked to the ground tab itself. So the first wire we just hooked up will hook to the light, which is ground here. Then the next one we're going to hook on the other side of the bulb to the battery positive. And it lights up, but watch when I move it around. You can see it gets kind of dim or it'll just die altogether. You say, well, I just tested that with the voltmeter. It's fine. No, it's not. Because as soon as we put a load, a really hard load on the connection, it gives up. It quits. This would tell me in this situation, I need to take that bolt off sand it and clean the connection and make sure the bolt's nice and tight. You'd be surprised how many problems I've found solved by just cleaning and tightening a ground. And I'd say, well, how did you figure that was the problem, wizard? With a load test light bulb. So I tighten that up so it's actually not going to be an issue. Let's move on to wizard tip number four. So wizard tip number four is going to be dealing with relays. You've tested wiring, you've tested fuses and all kind of other things. Why aren't my headlights working? 
Why aren't my fans coming on to cool my engine? Is it a relay? I've heard a few friends tell me it could be a relay, a bad relay. How do I know if it is or not? Let me show you how. You've seen these before in previous videos. And just like most of the tools we're going to use today, they're on my Amazon Affiliates page. I use a lot of tools off of there. That's why I put them there, because I actually used them in the shop. But these look like a relay, like your standard relay. But they're not. They have an on-off switch on them. This is on my Amazon Affiliates page in the Testers and Diagnostics section. A lot of people have had trouble finding these, and that's where they're at. This relay right here runs the fans. And for whatever reason, let's pretend the fans aren't coming on. And you're like, well, maybe it's a bad relay. Let's find out. Pull the relay out. Set it aside. And we're going to insert our tester, a relay tester. These don't have all the pins of a standard relay. They only have the two power pins. This is what we're testing here. So insert the power pins. Now I control the fans, not the computer, not anything else. And I turn on the switch. There you go. If you know from testing that the computer is sending a signal to turn on the fans, you've tested the fans and know that they work, but they still aren't coming on, it very likely could be a relay. And this one little tool can answer the question. Yes, it's a relay. I'll go buy a new relay now. Now that I know it does work. The wiring's good, the power's good, the fan's good, the ground's good. We all know that now because the fan turned on. These things have saved me probably literally thousands of hours over the last five or ten years of diagnosis. So one last test, we'll do another relay. Let's say that you turn on the key, nothing's happening, and as far as the engine's concerned, electrically, it's, some, it's not working, it's not turning on. Maybe the main power relay is bad. Let's pull the main power relay, the EFI relay, and let's put our tester there as well. When I turn this on, you'll hear a humming noise. You'll hear the electronics working in the engine. There you go. If now you can start your engine and it runs fine, you know it's a bad relay. Put these back on so the car is functional again. Relays can be kind of tricky. You can't just look at them and say, oh, that one looks bad. It's internal. It's inside. It's small electronics that die. And really, you have to test them with a tester. You can use just a piece of wire. I mean, I've heard people do that, but that's kind of crude, and you don't want to damage the terminals inside of here or spread the terminals apart. This is really the way to go. On to wizard tip number five. So we're back at Grandma, and yes, she's still for sale. We're going to use a power probe today. I'm going to show you some tricks you can do with that. This is a really super duper tool. Let's say you turn on the blower motor. Nothing happens. You say, well, I wonder if the blower motor is bad. You can take this tool and answer that question, yes or no, really, really fast. Let's hook it up. So you got to power up the power probe, so we'll hook positive and negative, and it'll beep at us. There we go. So on this power probe, we've hooked power and ground to it now. What it can do is it can show you there's good ground or good power by touching whatever terminal or connector you're working with, or you can give it a power or ground like this. That's giving it a ground. And that's giving it power. I know that's kind of loud, but it's so you know when you're testing it what you're doing. And it comes with a little dongle. You can give something a ground or give it power through this. So you've tested relays and fuses and your blower motor is still not coming on. You say, okay, maybe the blower motor itself is dead. How do I know that? Easy. Go to the connector to the blower motor. You, I didn't push any buttons. That's making that noise because it's telling me. I found a circuit that's ground or whatever it could be. So I'll go ahead and put it in the socket and we'll give it a power and see if we hear the blower motor spin up. So 
So yes, it came alive. It worked. So we know the blower motor is good. If you use this tool and hooked it into the main wires going to the blower motor and gave it power and it did nothing, then you know, okay, now it's time for a new blower motor. These are the kind of things in the shop that a customer brings me a car and I get my tools out, these tools I'm showing you, and, and it's like snapping fingers. It's like, and I've got answers, and now I can get an estimate together, and the customer's like, how did you figure that out so fast? It's just these tools I'm showing you. So, very, very handy things I'm showing you today. And then how expensive are they? This power probe's probably 150 bucks, but most of the tools I'm showing you today are 20 bucks, 40 bucks. They're, they're not super expensive, but they can save so much time. Let's use this one more time and test another item. Let's test the, the headlamp itself. So you've tested fuses, switch, and everything, and your headlights still aren't coming on. And you're like, what is the problem here? Are the bulbs blown? Is it the actual bulb? You can use this tool to find out. I'm going to touch one of the terminals on the back side, and I'm going to force it to have power. There we go. The bulb's good. We know the ground's good as well, because if it wasn't, it wouldn't turn on. We are done with the bulb. We can move on to something else. That's what this does. It's almost like a sword. It just divides. It says, you're done here. Move on to the next thing. It saves so much time. And I'll throw in one last wizard tip. Don't put things in the wrong hole. So thanks for following along on the first five tips. Hopefully it'll be very useful for you, save you some time, save you some headaches. Many of the tools we use today are actually listed in Amazon Affiliates, link in the description below. If you want to get somebody some gifts this season that are actually useful, really are proven in a shop type useful, you can also share the link and give some people some ideas of things you might want for Christmas. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. And don't miss out on the next video. It's going to have tips 6 through 10. Thanks for watching. Thank you.